Modulations, a simple technique. Almost every composition will benefit from a change of tonality, or in other words, a modulation. In this video, we will explore a simple technique that will allow you to successfully move from one key to another. Let's start with the tonic key. The term tonic key simply refers to the original key. Today let's make our tonic key A major. Now in modern music, we can pretty much modulate to any key or any tonal centre. But because today we are looking at a simple modulation technique, let's just stick to the closely related keys. So there's the dominant key. The dominant key is built on the fifth degree of a major. In this case today, it will be E major. We'll then modulate to the relative major or minor, and because we're starting with A major, the relative minor of A is F sharp minor. And then the final modulation will be to the subdominant key, which is built on the fourth degree of the A major scale, which is D major. Here is a short four bar passage that we will use as our starting point. Note that our passage is in the tonic key of A major. So now it's time to execute our very first modulation. All the action takes place in the final bar of the phrase. Modulations do not require any additional beats or bars. They are to be incorporated into the phrasing itself so that they do not interrupt the flow of the music. So let's get started. Our first modulation will be to the dominant key of A major, which of course is E major. So here we are focusing in on the last bar of the passage. What you will notice is that I have halved the note value of the last chord. This frees up the second beat so that we can perform the modulation within that final bar. Firstly, I'm going to drop our bass note one octave to give us some room. Then in the free second beat, I'm going to add a chord five of the new key. It is really important that you remember that the chord 5 is of the new key. Effectively, at this point, we have left the original key of A major behind, and we are working exclusively with the new key of E major. So we add a chord 5 of the new key E major, which is a B major chord. Take note of the D sharp in the B major chord. D sharp is not part of the original A major scale, but it plays a crucial role in the new key of E major. It is in fact the leading note, and it will push the music towards the E major tonality that we're trying to achieve. So in the next bar, our new tonality begins. It's E major. Let's hear how the modulation sounds. There you have it, a modulation to the dominant key in its most basic form. Now if we want to smooth the progression and allow the music to flow a little more, and in effect hide the technical workings of the modulation, we can add some passing notes, auxiliary notes, and or other chord notes. So in the higher part, we can add another note of the chord. And then, adding a passing note between the B and the G sharp, that should be enough. Let's take a listen. And here is the entire passage. There we have it, a short passage of music that starts in A major and modulates to the dominant key of E major. So let's use the same process to modulate to the relative minor key, in this case, F sharp minor. So 
So again, we'll hone in on the final bar of the passage. You will notice that I've halved the value of the final chord, and this frees up beat 2 so that we can add chord 5 of the new key. So, in adding chord 5 of the new key of F sharp minor, we're going to put in a C sharp major chord. Remember, it must be chord 5 of the new key. We've moved on from the original key. Chord 5 of F sharp minor is a C sharp major chord and is going to involve an accidental. This time we will need to add an E sharp. E sharp does not belong to the original key of A major, but it does become the leading note of the new key F sharp minor. Let's hear the modulation in its basic form. So that sounds pretty good. But if we want to go the next step and smooth out the process and perhaps hide some of the really obvious chord progressions that we've got there, we can use passing notes, auxiliary notes, and or other chord notes. This time, let's put an auxiliary note between the two C sharps and a passing note between the C sharp and the A. It sounds like this. And now for the entire passage. So now we come to our final modulation for the day, the subdominant key modulation. I have intentionally left this one till the end because there is a trick. Let's go through the process again. We move to the final bar, and again I've halved the note value of the final chord, freeing up beat 2. Beat 2 is where we will put our chord 5 of the new key. And the new key, in this case, is D major. So by following our same process, we now put in a chord 5 of the new key, the new key being D major, we put that in the second beat of the final bar. Unfortunately for us, that's an A major chord, and if you look at the beginning of the bar, we have an A major chord as well. We haven't got any point of difference between the A major from the A major passage and the chord 5 of D major, which again is A major. So, to create this point of difference, I'm going to add the dominant 7th. By adding the 7th to the chord 5, you will notice that we now have a G natural. Remembering, we are moving on to the new key of D major here. So, G natural belongs to D major. If we look back to A major, we have a G sharp. So the G natural, the adding of the dominant seventh, actually gives us that accidental that we need to help us get into the new key. There is one important rule when using a dominant seventh, and that is that the seventh must fall to the third of the next chord. Well, that works, but let's apply our smoothing process so the chords don't sound quite so clunky. We're going to try and get that music to flow across the change of key. This time, I'm going to delay the placement of the dominant seventh. I'm going to add an auxiliary note between the A's and then use the dominant seventh as a passing note between the A natural and the F sharp which sounds like this. So there we have it. We've modulated to the dominant key, the relative minor in this case, and also to the subdominant key. So to recap, there's a couple of things we just need to really get absolutely secure in our minds. Number one, modulations must occur within the phrasing of the piece. We do not add bars or beats 
to arrive at the new key. It happens all within the phrasing. Number two, we use chord five of the new key to transition or modulate to the new key. Do not use chord five of the old key because you will simply modulate back to where you already started. There will be no modulation. And the final point, point three, once the modulation is structurally sound, use passing notes, auxiliary notes, and or other chord notes to create movement across the harmonic progression. And that's it. Simple as that. Like so many things in life, the more practice you do, the better you get. So start adding modulations to your compositions and see how much your writing improves. Good luck.